In this video, I want to discuss reaction mechanisms and the rate determining step, abbreviated RDS. So a reaction mechanism is a step-by-step -step series of elementary or mechanistic reactions which produce an overall chemical change. Another way to think about a reaction mechanism is that it is essentially a very detailed molecular description of what is precisely going on as reactants turn into their products. So I've got an example chemical reaction right here, and it's an overall chemical reaction. This is the sort of chemical reaction we're used to seeing in general chemistry. All it shows are the reactants and the products, and of course we have a balanced equation. But we can actually be a lot more descriptive than this. We can take this overall chemical reaction and break it down into its elementary or mechanistic reactions. And you can see this overall chemical reaction actually takes place in two steps. So first step, we have two molecules of NO2 gas going with rate constant K1 to a molecule of NO3 gas and a molecule of NO gas. Then in the second step, we've got a molecule of NO3 gas combining with a molecule of carbon monoxide gas with rate constant K2 to NO2 gas and CO2 gas. So you can see I've circled in blue here NO3 gas. That's because NO3 is an intermediate. It is formed and then used up during the mechanism. You can see it doesn't appear in the reactants or the products of the overall chemical reaction. It's formed and then destroyed before we even finish, so we call it an intermediate. So let's say for this mechanism, K1 is much smaller than K2. In other words, K2 is much bigger than K1. We know that these rate constants, K, determine the rate of these reactions, and step one and step two are gonna have their own individual rates. This says that step one happens much slower than step two. So we can call step one our slow step, and step two our fast step. Whenever you have a slow step in an overall mechanism, we call that the rate determining step. In other words, it determines the rate. Think about it like this. A team is only as fast as its slowest player, just like an overall mechanism is only as fast as its slowest step. It doesn't matter how fast step two is if step one hasn't finished yet, right? We have to wait for step one to finish, and it's the slow step, so it's going to actually determine our rate. This means that an overall possible rate law for this whole mechanism could look like this, where the rate equals K1 times the concentration of NO2 squared. This means that two molecules of NO2 must have reacted at or before the rate determining step. So you can see our overall rate law is going to be based on the reactants of our slow step. We have two molecules of NO2 combining here. That's why we have concentration of NO2 squared. And of course we used K1 as our rate constant because that was the rate constant for our slow step. So you can see if you write the rate law for your slow step, you've written the rate law for your overall reaction. That's because this is the rate determining step. It determines the rate of the overall reaction. And make sure you know how to read these rate laws. This means that, again, two molecules, because of this square here of NO2, must have reacted either at or before the rate determining step. In this case, they reacted at the rate determining step. Okay, let's do this example problem. So let's say the overall rate law for this reaction here, 2A plus B goes to C, looks like this. Rate equals the rate constant times the concentration of A squared. What this means is that two molecules of A must react at or before the rate determining step, or the slow step. So I want to know which out of these three mechanisms is a possible mechanism for this situation. And I want to note here that I've used the word I to denote an intermediate for all of these mechanisms. So in mechanism one, you can see it's only one step. Two molecules of A react to make C. And this is the slow step, and it is also the rate determining step because of that. So we do satisfy a requirement that two molecules of A are reacting at the rate determining step, and they do make C our product, but B is nowhere to be found, and we know B is one of the reactants, so B must be present in the mechanism for it to be a possible mechanism. So therefore, mechanism one is not possible. What about mechanism two? So in mechanism two, we have a two-step mechanism where 
A plus B react to make an intermediate in the slow step, which means it's the rate determining step. And then in step two, that intermediate then goes on to react with A to make C in a fast step. So we do see A and B as our reactants, making C our product. But the problem is we don't have two molecules of A reacting at the slow or rate determining step. You only see one molecule of A here reacting with a molecule of B. So therefore, mechanism two is also not possible. So that means mechanism three must be the right one, but let's check it to make sure. So mechanism three is also a two-step mechanism in which two molecules of A react to make an intermediate in the slow or rate determining step. So that satisfies our requirement that two molecules of A must have reacted at or before the rate determining step. Then this intermediate that they generated reacts with B to make our product in the fast final step. So this satisfies all our requirements. We see A, two A's, and a B making C. That's what happened in our reaction. Two A plus B goes to C. And in our slow or rate determining step, we saw two A's reacting. So this satisfies all of our requirements. We see that this is a possible mechanism for the above situation. I'd like to conclude this video by going through the types of elementary or mechanistic reactions that you can see in general. There are unimolecular, bimolecular, and then termolecular or trimolecular elementary or mechanistic reactions. So in a unimolecular reaction, we simply have one molecule turning into products. And here is the corresponding rate law for a situation like that. In a bimolecular reaction, two molecules have to collide in the correct orientation with enough kinetic energy to make products. And I listed out two general examples of this here. And you can see this is the rate law for A plus A goes to products, and this is the rate law for A plus B goes to products. Finally, in a termolecular or trimolecular mechanistic or elementary reaction, you have three things colliding in 3D space at the right orientation with enough kinetic energy to turn into products. So I listed out two examples of that here. The first one has rate law K times the concentration of A cubed. The second has rate law K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. And you should note that termolecular reactions are very unlikely to occur. That's because three molecules perfectly colliding in three-dimensional space in the right orientation with enough kinetic energy is very improbable. And I also want to really hit home that it is not necessary to determine the rate law experimentally for an elementary or mechanistic step. Notice how we did no experiments here, but we were able to write all of these rate laws for these reactions. If you have an overall chemical reaction, you do have to determine the rate law experimentally. But since we know what's happening on such an elementary or mechanistic level, it is not necessary to determine the rate law with an experiment. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.